In Venezuela, the candidate for the great patriotic poll, Nicolas Maduro, denounced the censorship by the national and international media. In China, 14 Palestinian movements signed the Beijing Declaration agreeing to promote a national unity government in the midst of the Israeli genocide in Gaza and the expansion of illegal settlements in the occupied West Bank. And in Ethiopia, authorities report a new deaths linked to landslides caused by heavy rains. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Ana Marrero from the Telesur headquarters in Caracas, Venezuela. We'll be with the news. Stay with us. In Venezuela, the candidate for a great patriotic poll, Nicolas Maduro, denounced the censorship by the national and international media on the country's progress in the last semester, as well as the electoral campaign. During his visit to the city of San Cristobal in the state of Táchira, the candidate denounced that international media such as the Spanish agency EFE, the AFP agency, the AP agency CNN, among others, have tried to make his campaign visible as well as all the achievements reached during the first semester of the year. The candidate of the Great Patriotic Poll uh, described uh, the international media as a uh, hitman to the service of lies, uh, assuring that they have sought to make invisible the shipment of the revolution uh, by the echoing uh, false information uh, provided by the extreme right. Somos una realidad. We are a reality. They have tried to make us invisible a thousand times. Now the operation is directed by hitmen, the hitmen of the lie, the Spanish agency, EFE, the AFP agency, the AP agency, CNN, stations here once again. We know the story. I have already seen that movie. Well, gentlemen hitmen of the lie, of the international agencies, I have already seen that movie, and at the end of the movie, the boy of the movie wins. The people and their civic military police power wins. I already know the end of the movie. final de la película! Also, the presidential candidate for the Great Patriotic Poll, Nicolás Maduro, assured during his visit to Catialamar in the framework of his electoral campaign that next Sunday the people will give all the accounts to the oligarchy uh, that uh, call for the sanctions, uh, blockades, and invasions in the country. This way, he highlighted how the people, through their vote, will defend the Venezuelan extreme right wing that except pretends to generate a scenarios of violence and uh, so would have earned in the country. Eso no es pataruco. Tienen algún plan? Those nine cowards have a plan? What they have is interests. What they want is violence to stay in Venezuela and to continue with their business of being financed by a group of imbeciles in the world. Do you remember the other stupid one? That stupid guy stole more than three billion dollars and now he lives in Miami. Someday we will put the hooks on him. You will see. Furthermore, the candidate stated that those leaders of the extreme right, a fugitive from Venezuelan justice, who intend to return to the country to govern, will return to be in prison or for treason. Do you remember Leopoldo López? He lives in a mansion in the neighborhoods of Salamanca, of the multimillionaires of Madrid. With what money? With the money they stole, with the imbeciles of the right wing that financed him. 
Do you remember Julio Borges, the criminal, the murderer of children? He lives in a mansion in Spain. Antonio Ledesma, the same surnames? Now they say they are coming because they are all going to be ministers. Well then, as you say, they are going to be ministers. Ministers of Tocoron you are going to be if you come back. Or of the Rodeo if you come back. Because these people on Sunday, with their vote, we are going to do justice. We are going to post all the accounts to that oligarchy that called for sanctions, blockades and invasions. Let's take a very short break, but remember you can now join us on our TikTok account as LSR English, where you'll be able to see news in different formats, news updates and more. Stay tuned for more news. Welcome back to From the South. In Palestine, the Israeli army strikes against, again against a, a province in the southern Gaza Strip. Medical authorities reported that Israeli bombardment left at least 70 people dead and more than 200 wounded in the province of Kani Yunis. In this context, Israel launched a declaration of a war against Hamas and launched a series of bombardments on Gaza, which has so far left more than 39,000 dead and more than 89,800 wounded. In Palestine, following the recent Israeli bombardment of the southern Gaza Strip town of Kenyunis, a Palestinian journalist said that Israel seeks to eliminate safe zones in Gaza. First of all, thank God our comrades are okay. I was sitting behind this plastic, just a few centimeters away from this tent where the missile hit. This tent is made of wood. So if a stone falls on it, it is destroyed. Imagine the Israeli missiles. Me and my colleagues sit here. We watch the news. We get ready to work and go out to cover the events. And we have been doing this since minute one of this genocidal war. Israel, by bombing this tent, seeks to eliminate any safe zone, whether it is in hospitals or anywhere. It does not want any safe zone in Gaza. It does not want Gazan citizens to feel safe, not even journalists. The army knows very well that this tent is for journalists, and all these tents around me are for journalists, but they bomb them anyway. On Tuesday, 14 Palestinian movements signed the Beijing Declaration, agreeing to promote a national unity government in the midst of the Israeli genocide in Gaza and the expansion of illegal settlements in the occupied West Bank. This went under the mediation of China, the signatures including Fatah, Hamas and the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, pledged to promote comprehensive national unity, including all uh, factions within the framework of the Organization for the Liberation of Palestine. And in Russia, at least 17 Ukrainian unarmed aerial vehicles were shot down by air defense over the province of Bryansk and the city of Sebastopol, the Ministry of Defense said today. Air defense guard system and electronic warfare units repel an attack by the Ukrainian unnamed aerial vehicles. Michael Rasonshev, governor of the city, said that the local infrastructure was not damaged. Authorities in that links to landslide caused by heavy rains. 
In this regard, a local official of the Kengshu Sasha Godzi district in the Gofa region to the south of the country stressed that uh, while search operations continue in the area, they have reported 55 new bodies, thus rising a number of deaths to 146, with most of the victims being children and pregnant women. Let's take our last break, but before we invite you to join us on our WhatsApp community for our English-speaking audience, you can scan the QR code on the screen to join the Red Link, share a link to reach more people. Continuous coverage of Latin America and the Caribbean as well as the rest of the world. Let's stay connected and informed with Telesur. We'll follow your break, then go away. Welcome back. On Monday, the Mexican Navy Secretary reported the discovery of a subsequent dismantling of a new illegal drug lab, the second largest found since 2018. The Secretary of State have inside about 3,820 kilograms of presumed methamphetamine in the lab located in the Sinaloa state. The Navy Secretary of the found 29,600 liters and 2,250 kilograms of basic chemical substances with multiple uses. In Colombia, the law prohibited uh, Bull fight feeding in all regions of the country was approved, which will generate an important change in the use of scenarios for cultural and sporting activities. The law approved month before by the country's Congress was signed this Monday by the Colombian President Gustavo Petro, who expressed that an ancestral tradition cannot tell the world that it is culture to kill laws and beings for fun and entertainment. Here we need a concrete plan, not a rhetorical one, where people who have been linked to this type of life, who have also fed with passion, can find a job and professional development, with dignity in life in the city of Bogota. Above all, they have to find this path. We may also have to consider it at the level of norms. I do not know if they are contemplated in the recently issued projects, but we should talk about it. There should be as few people affected as possible. Pero debe hablarse de ello. Debe haber el menos. In Chile, citizens protest against the government's announcement of the possible construction of a high security prison in the capital city. One of the sites planned for the construction of the new prison is a piece of land owned by the army located on Pedro Mon Avenue in the city of Santiago. Before the announcement, members of the Housing Committee coordinator warned that the land in the area was uh, requested more than a year ago for the construction of social benefit housing. We have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesolenglish.net. You can also join us on our socials, we're on Facebook, on X, and on Instagram as well. Socials, we're on Facebook, on X, and on Instagram as well. For Telesolenglish, I'm from the South, I'm Ana Marrero, thank you for watching.